like AD is the Nick Nacky injury kind of guy. Yeah. You know, like he often gets injured and that that's my fear, which is why I always wanted to have like a backup four or five guy. Because mm-hmm. now we have Kuz and AD out of commish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just like worried about that. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's uh, Jarrell, DJ Jarrell, a.k.a. Joel. How's it going? Yes, yes. Uh, This is the Lakers Nation Philippines podcast in collaboration with the Lakers mixtape. Really, the Lakers mixtape. But we ain't going to be mixing shit (laughs) for today. Uh, Dash Studios is going to be down till almost Thanksgiving. So this is uh, a pod that we're recording uh, for you guys. That's going to be played on Beat Junkie Radio. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, in regards to <coughs> AD, were you, er- were you ever concerned about him being that knick-knack type injury guy? He's not like Kyrie Irving where it's like he'll play good for a season and a half mm-hmm. and then boom, he hits that one injury. It's mm-hmm. like he's out, out of commission for the season. Well, it's he, to me, he's almost like – A football player or a quarterback, okay? So when quarterbacks or, you know, of course, a quarterback's a franchise player on an NFL team. When a quarterback gets injured, every fan of that team gets concerned for a second because, you know, with a quarterback, you know, a thumb, okay, like like AD's injury, right? Sure. For a quarterback, it's going to affect them, you know, no matter what. You don't know how long it's going to affect them. Even if he comes back healthy, you don't know if it's going to affect them. So to me, AD was almost, I'm not saying he's a quarterback of the Lakers. It's just that in terms of injuries, it always seems like he gets an injury. You don't know if he's going to be out two weeks. You don't even know if he's going to be out two months. You know, that's my concern about that guy, you know. So, I mean, it and it plays to the fact that, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, in past shows, if people have listened to past shows, we've always agreed that they needed another four or a five. Someone else. Uh, a flexible four or five. Yes, yes. Because right now, uh, I'm looking at it, and to restate all our opinions yes. for, for the new listener, or if you, in case you haven't peeped out the past episodes, uh, in unison, we agreed, look, Dwight Howard only played nine games <laughs> yeah. for the Wizards. So he's recovering. And even his tenure with the Lakers, he had both a shoulder and a neck injury. Yes, back injury that really affected his performance. By Absolutely, the way. which which I thought everyone, as much as I didn't like Dwight Howard's personality and persona during that tenure, I was empathetic because I have very herniated discs in judo from my neck. So for him to throw down like that, yeah, yeah. And then AD, who is the knickknack guy, which is the context of what we're talking about right now. Yes. Okay. Javel McGee <laughs> got pneumonia when he started playing twenty five minutes or more. Yes, uh, especially like, you know, okay, so he has asthma, right? That's that's the whole thing. So from what I hear, he's good for 15 minutes. I'm good with him being there for 15 minutes, but if AD's injured, what other big do they have really? I mean, we're going to bring up uh, Greek Freak's brother? <laughs> is, is right. That, is that what's going to happen? Because I guarantee you he's not ready. Because if he was ready, he'd be playing in a preseason game. We yep. had da- we had um, Daniel. Was it Daniel Stockton? Yeah, John Stockton. John, son. he played. <laughs> so right, um, but we didn't see any of this uh, of um, Giannis's brother yet. Quinn know. Cook isn't playing because he has like a calf injury. Oh, man, um, Jared Dudley, he's being monitored because mm-hmm. he has a few ailing, whatever that means. Whatever that means, ailing, ailing, na- ailing, nagging. All those are scary words. All of them. Absolutely. And then here, here's the other situation. We didn't see this, but you even brought this up on our text thread. Kyle Kuzma and those Pumas. Oh, my gosh. Pumas already <laughs> fucking people's sh- feet up. Yeah. Um, yeah, DeMarcus, what's up, man? <laughs> right. Exactly. And maybe Puma is, is such a lifestyle-centric shoe. Mm-hmm. And granted, they were in competition with Adidas for running track. Yes. But we all know Brooks. And Asics, even though they're nasty colored tennis shoes, even they're the best for running. Hoka, you know, Hoka, those oh, yeah. ugly sketcher type looking shoes. Totally. You're right. Man, I love running in those. <laughs> so Right. Yeah. And you got and you I we're you're like the six four version of me. I I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm the five foot seven big bone guy. Yeah. You're like the six four six four version of me. So yeah, I, I get it. So for me right now, um 
And and the critical thing is AD's going to have to play some five also. Yes, he will. Because he's the best five in, in, in a closing unit. Yes, almost as much so as LeBron has to play one, you know. Sure, exactly. It, you know, a great point. That's, that's exactly – I mean, um, LeBron and AD transcend positions. So they're going to have to play multiple positions on the court, whether it be three, four, and five for AD, one, two, three, four, and five for LeBron. So, um, yeah, they're going to be crucial, basically. Yeah, I, I liked – that starting lineup during the first game. Oh, yeah. That was nice. Which is Avery Bradley, Danny Green, LeBron. Um, JaVale. JaVale at the five and then AD at the, AD mm-hmm. at the four. Yes. yes. I, I will say with Avery Bradley, I hope they teach and contour him to not always try to go for the steal because it feels so heavily efforted, which we appreciate. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But the thing is, it's like... I can see that in the playoffs where he's he's gambling too much. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing that I learned from an interview uh, with um, – who was it? Um, um, Steve Nash a while back. I, heard, I, I remember hearing him in an interview. When you go for the steal and play defense, it takes up more energy. Right. You know, better to stop the guy before he gets into a comfortable place than to actually go for a steal because all of a sudden he, he'll be wide open to go for that spot. And not only that, if if your frame of mind is just mm-hmm. defense, I I don't know if I'm this is illogical saying this, but that's the wrong era because we need offense from yes. a, from everyone. Yes, yes. So though I do like that lineup. Yeah, I definitely lo- I I love that lineup. Wait, um, you you were texting me <laughs> um, during mid replay of the game because I'm not going to wake up at four thirty just to fucking watch <laughs> that shit. But you were texting me. Stating like, oh my god, dude, KCP and Rondo are are, are making a mess out there. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I I like I, from what I saw. <laughs> so this is I didn't watch the whole game. I saw two and a half quarters and then two highlights. Mm-hmm. So for you who's listening and watching, I'm not trying to pose like I watched the whole game. <laughs> but from what I saw intently, because of your text, uh-huh. is Rondo plays well with Danny Green. Yes. With LeBron James, AD, and um, JaVale. Yes. But the moment you put Rondo in with KCP, it messes up the fluidity. <laughs> it does. I mean, KCP is one of those guys who um, I remember uh, Byron Scott saying he's the only – at one time he was the only guy on the team who had a green light to shoot. But he now he shoots and shoots and shoots and builds brick houses. <laughs> Totally. You know, so it messes up not only the flow of the offense, but all of a sudden you got long rebounds coming off and it's really messing up the defense as well. And, you know, okay, so I'm not a Rajon Rondo fan. Neither am I. But <laughs> as a backup, he's okay. As a backup, he's okay. But that, that was kind of making him look bad as well. You know, right. It was KCP who was actually making him look bad. <laughs> Very good eye. Yes. Because from the second game, from what I was observing, and we'll go back to the first game, I actually wanted to bitch and complain about how Rondo played because mm-hmm. he started. Yeah. But because he's with two other guys with Moxie, mm-hmm. like he works with LeBron and AD. And, yes. and you could totally tell there is this this linking of the minds between Rondo and AD. Yes. Which is dope. I don't mind Rondo coming off the bench. Preferably a third, uh-huh. but you know what? Caruso was both good and bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caruso looked, I would say, green. He looked like he has a lot to learn. Uh, with Rondo, it, it, it feels like when AD came in, you get the feeling like, you know, say, for instance, you're at the park and you're playing pickup games. Your friend shows up. Hey, I want to right. run with you. That's what I think the relationship between, Great analogy. Him, between him and uh ideas and caruso feels there's certain moments where it's kind of like avery bradley like avery bradley will like over play mm-hmm. defense mm-hmm. where with caruso he's like overthinking the flow let me <laughs> yeah. give the flow and he's forcing the flow but i will say when i saw dwight howard during the second game yes and he played backup center there was a couple of strings where he was still trying to be orlando dwight howard was trying to back someone up but he missed mm-hmm. a lot of the uh jump hooks okay but Caruso was his savior. Caruso ah. saved him on like two, three straight plays where he was like looking for him. He's like, dude, just do the pick and roll, and I got you. Okay, so let me let me ask you this, Charles. Okay. Uh, 
what are we expecting from Dwight Howard? Do we do we really expect any offense from him, or is he going to be the defensive guy that gets people funneled to him? I like the nine and nine and three that Dwight had during the first game. Okay, yeah. You you played like Scott Pollard. Yeah. Give me the small double double. You're saying exactly. Okay, you know just effort. But whenever I don't necessarily cringe because I want to give him a chance, but whenever he gets back into mm-hmm. one in four out. Yes. Dwight Howard, that's when I get worried because mm-hmm. you're still recovering and you're choosing to bang, yeah. which is his old style. Yes, yes. So for me, as far as for a starter, I think Dwight is good as a backup. Okay. Not okay. as a st- – I mean, he works with AD also and LeBron. Yes, he, yes, he does. Because he, he is th- – those th- Danny Green, Dwight Howard, JaVel McGee, those three, they know what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And you can feel it. Danny Green was mm-hmm. open a couple of times, and he was like, dude, I'm not used to this. Okay. I'm not used to being this open. That's why I, I <laughs> bricked a couple. Yeah. He was not used to that rhythm. Bring, like literally yeah. like 10 to 15 feet open. Did you notice when he shot, he still did his fadeaway even wide open? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and that's more effort. Yeah, it is. So, But I like what you're getting with them. With Rajon, I feel like he's going to go into these spurts of like, oh, dude, I'm still Celtics Rondo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with, with the point guard position, I thought Troy Daniels played decent yes. as, as, as a backup mm-hmm. one or two mm-hmm. uh, during the first game. I, I can't wait to see Quinn Cook because it, 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 there's always something about a backup point guard with championship moxie, mm-hmm. which Derek Fisher became when Ron Harper. Yes, you Definitely. know what I'm saying? I mean, so many of my friends who are Golden State fans, you know, they 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 sing their praises of Quinn Cook. They're like, "Man, you guys took him from us," you know. So I'm really excited to see him. But um, let's circle back to Caruso and Dwight Howard okay. for a second. Okay. So I get the feeling that they kind of put a little pressure on themselves, but different kinds. Dwight Howard because he has something to prove. He's a veteran, right? And tell me if you agree with this. Is Caruso really? starting to feel himself a little so now he feels like he has to um come into the reputation that was laid out for him because from what you're describing i didn't see much of him before what you're describing it sounds like he's pressing you know what it is it's almost similar to lonzo ball ah okay where it's like team first team first but sometimes it's like dude no you you could have driven to the lane yeah oh, okay so it's almost like not the overthinking of like I feel myself. Mm-hmm. It's overthinking of I don't want to feel myself. <laughs> yeah. If that makes any sense. It does. It is. It's like when people are telling you, oh, you're dope, you're dope. But you're like, okay, let me tell myself to bring it down a little. You know, Calm the fuck down. Calm dude. the fuck down. You know? Right. So. So, so that's my opinion about Caruso. I'm, am I hopeful? There's times I go, mm-hmm. am I hopeful the same way I was hopeful with like Ronnie Turioff? <laughs> I, I was a big Javaris Quinton okay, yeah. guy. I was a big. I was like, oh my god, we got mm-hmm. a fast point guard finally that can shoot and can jut and drive to the basket. Yeah. You know, he was almost like a running back. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, for, for you younger heads, he ended up playing for Washington. <laughs> got into a yeah, a little, okay, gun little, gun saloon shoot shoot around maybe yeah, a little or, little gambling thing with Gilbert Arenas. Right, that was it. So. so, so for me, I'm hopeful of Caruso the way I am hopeful of a Devin George. Well, I don't think Caruso is involved with gangs any, so I think we're safe in that regard. <laughs> right, right. But but uh, the one thing with he and Avery Bradley, there is effort. Yes, and that's always appreciated. By the by, the Lakers fans totally. It really is. Um, actually, fans in general, you always appreciate effort. Sure, I, I mean even someone like Derek Rose, who's balling out during the preseason oh, wow. for Detroit. Yeah, I mean he has effort on both ends. Yeah, but he you could tell he's such a veteran because he's running through plays. He's almost like semi-athletic Stockton right now, the way he's playing. <laughs> Like a like a Troy Hudson back in the day, almost where he was just kind of like running through the lane and getting bumped. And- uh yes, with a little bit of Rod Strickland. There you go. Rod Strickland's a good one. You know, like Troy Troy Hudson was very slow mo and uh, deliberate, right? And mm-hmm. he had a weird cadence. It's almost our test Paul Pierce like the way <laughs> yeah. he got to the basket, right? Yeah. yeah. He had this weird cadence that you couldn't figure out. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, um. One thing I did want to talk since we spoke a little bit about, but but Dwight, you had another question. What 
So you had a follow up question about Dwight also. It was more along the same lines as Caruso to where do you think Dwight is putting pressure on himself? And yes. Do you think it's going to affect his game, not positively, but negatively? Here's what I honestly feel gutturally about Dwight. Mm-hmm. Atlanta Dwight, he's roaming around somewhere Uh-oh. around end of July or oh, yeah. January. Or even Orlando Dwight that put his hands on Stan Van Gundy's shoulders, that one. There you go. <laughs> but definitely like cocksuckery Dwight is oh, lingering geez. around there. Douchebag Here- Dwight. <laughs> And here's the other thing that I'm that uh, is lingering with Dwight. The fact that I saw him try to back down people, uh-huh. he needs to adjust from that. Yes, he does. Maybe hold the ball, do what Shaq did really well, which is like survey the floor spacing, mm-hmm. survey the land. But as far as for him backing people down, I don't mind it. But it was like four plays in a row, bro. Oh, wow. Until Caruso had to rescue him. That's like... Almost telling him, you know, remember your back injury? <laughs> telling him something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And and then, you know, when you're going up against, is it Allen, who's a great shot blocker from the Brooklyn Nets? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think he's dull. Yeah. So it's kind of tough when you're doing it. It's like, it's like when Morning would back up like Deke. You can't make Mutombo. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. As much as they had all that history at like Georgetown and everything and coming up, yeah. Totally. So, so yeah, that, that's what I had to say. Um, how did you feel about the Lakers social media manager tweeting after the first preseason game? Consider this a warning, oh, wow. comma, at NBA. Oh, wow. Okay, so, you know, I laughed. If, if the intent was to get people to talk about it, mission accomplished. But if the the intent was really just to say, oh, this is a warning, dude, really? Step back a little. Come on. Dwight Howard, step back a little. (laughs) Right, right, exactly. Yeah. I I thought, uh, sorry, young audience, uh, (laughs) uh, get off my lawn uh, moment for Charles. I didn't like it. It was premature. It's Mm -hmm. It's like you're grabbing your dick already. You know what I mean? You're already bragging, which then then the Milwaukee Bucks – uh, Twitter account was like, consider this a preseason game, <laughs> which I thought was, you know what, justified. Yes. Yes. I, I don't like that. I, I don't either. But, you know, uh, like I texted you earlier in the week, I think it's fun. I th- I really do because – That I'll agree with. That is key. That, you know, I mean, everybody's used to people being keyboard warriors. Why not have fun with it a little? Make it a marketing, a, a, a marketing uh, opportunity. Okay. So the Dodgers, they just – Okay, I'm not gonna go. No, no, go ahead, I'm that. not. I'm not gonna go talk about how they play and everything because that's a big source of heartbreak for me right now. But there was an instance where they were playing the Giants. Okay, um, hated rival. Uh, Max Muncie hit a home run into McCovey Cove. Uh, Madison Bumgarner threw the pitch, and he said, "He said, uh, don't look at your ball. You know, run the bases. You know, and not." You know, very colorful words compared to what I said. Sure. I, I said the tame version. Max Muncy looked back at him and said, go get it out of the ocean. Now, that didn't circulate on that didn't circulate on uh, the media outlets. But someone caught it on Twitter and posted a video. Keep telling the story. Yes. Ahead. It became a shirt. And it became a rallying cry against the jo- Dodgers. Go get it in the ocean. Go get it in the ocean. And it was freaking ridiculous. It was, it, was, it was funny. And it made a lot of money. It gave Max Muncy a lot of notoriety. He was already known as a bulldog, but a lot of people were like, okay, cool. Like, it's justified now, you know? And now we have a rallying cry to talk shit to these stupid Giants fans. So social media is a very – I know I I get into my get-off-the-lawn kind of of moments too. Sure. But at the same time, I am now starting to realize that social media is a very powerful – and profitable thing. So can you imagine um, All-Star break? Lakers are just tearing through the league. 40 wins before the All-Star break. Like, I'm, you know, hopeful thinking, right? Or sure. thinking. How cool would a shirt would be to say, consider this a warning? I think it's dope. Here's where I'm coming from. <laughs> so we have two contrary opinions. Yes. When LeBron was like, oh, I'm on playoff mode. Mm-hmm. Quank, quank, quank. 
You know, so like during the preseason interviews and training camp interviews, what LeBron was primarily saying was like, hey, my mom told me, you know what? Just be about it. You don't have to yes. talk about it. So I, I understand where you're coming from because now it's kind of like, yo, man, let's add some hip hop to this. <laughs> yes. Let's be braggadocious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Let's be Chuck D. Yeah. Let's be Slick Rick and wear some B.A. Baracus <laughs> gold chains. Yes. To date myself even more <laughs> and be older. And an iced out eye patch. <laughs> right. So for me, uh, I'd like it to come come competition time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I totally agree. But at the same time, I think there's a there's this 21-year-old kid, 23-year-old 21 21 kid behind the Twitter. You know, Could so, be 18 and an intern. Yeah, and he doesn't understand what we understand. He really doesn't. <laughs> be- because in a certain sense, it comes from the top. And I remember Jeannie... Bef- like hours before we signed LeBron, yes, was like, do not underestimate. Period. Yep. yep. Which, you know, it is ambiguous, but you know, it's about the Lakers. Yes, it is. Yes, so, it is. yeah, which which I can forgive in passing. <laughs> so, some more get off my lawn stuff. Yeah, I'm glad we're recording now because if I would have recorded when this incident happened, when I showed you a screenshot of someone, um. You and Dino. Shout out to Deans, by the way. Hope you're enjoying Vegas. Yes, I'm sure he is. Yeah. Um, it was a guy who was kind of ass kissy towards me during in Facebook with a direct message <laughs> where he was asking for a favor and referring to me as sir. And then there was on one post where someone was asking, do you think we should get another big? And I justified it as we talked about in the very yes. beginning. So lesson learned, for, well, not necessarily for you, but for me. I'm never posting on those Facebook groups anymore. Ah. Especially because this one guy was like really cool and ass kissy towards me. And then that's why I have to show like his his message to me calling me <laughs> sir. And I, yeah. It's like everyone had the same opinion, but he decided to go at me because, you know, who's one of the hosts for the podcast? Mm. So I, I'm not participating on those groups anymore. There are these people <laughs> online because I know because I used to be one. Same, same with me. They were contrarians. There are people who are out there who want to start an argument just to start one. Sounds like this guy's a contrarian. Or, and or insecure also. Yes. Because when you're very nice behind closed yeah. doors in a private message <laughs> and then out in the forums now to challenge it, it's like, dude, if you want to be the Troy Daniels warrior, if you, if you want to be like, yay, hurrah. Oh, wow. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> yeah. So – so for you who's a little bit older, I would not recommend going on not only a forum but a Facebook forum. Yeah. I, I, I'm done with that, dude. I, I, don't, you, you, I don't debate with people online as much as I used to. I, I just don't. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a black hole that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger you can't get out of because there's always people out there who are not only contrarian but they are last word people. They just want to get the last word, no matter what it is, you know, and then they'll try to come up with an insult. And it's like, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't I don't need, you know, this energy is not what I'm about. Yeah, and there's a lot of dumb a- dumbasses. Oh, yeah. It, it's because, like, you know, like in communication, right? It's topic, reaction, and an example. Yes. If all yours is just reaction, then it's just give me something concrete. Yep. If you throw an insult my way. Or if you uh, just try to, you know, or here's a, here's another one, where they correct your grammar. <laughs> oh man, I already know I won. To, I already know I won. So guess what? I'm done with you. <laughs> right. I, the only time I feel correcting grammar is good if it's like a troll from another group. Ah. <laughs> you know, but even that that it, it's got to be within the context. Like, okay, you want to be a know it all. Yeah. Grammar is a part of the list, yes. not the main attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So um, in regards to that get off my lawn part, there's there's a couple of things that I've been watching uh, as far as for highlight-wise. I've been watching the Pelicans. Okay. Uh, Zion <sighs> looks like wow. the deal. Yes. It, because, you know, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, Avery Bradley's been – Doing so well during training camp, but mm-hmm. you're guarding Rajon Rondo. He's plenty old. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're going to be by far full of energy and after losing 40 pounds. <laughs> but True. in regards to 
people saying, well, he was playing with, with young kids. This is the league now. <laughs> and boy, he's for real, dude. Man, you know, I, people, okay, I hate Duke. But I don't know if anybody follows the recruiting or anything. Duke has like five five star recruits who are coming in next year. So who they're getting in is, you know, okay, so in three years they're gonna allow high schoolers to come straight. Right now, these are the ones who are a Duke. So technically, they might be the kind of people who are going to be in the league anyways. So the talent at Duke that you face every day, it's almost like back in the day, University of Miami football or North Carolina basketball, you know, or even now North Carolina basketball. Sure. Uh, these guys, are, or Kentucky basketball, these guys are groomed. They're A lot of them are ready to go. A lot of them aren't, you know, but a lot of them are. Look at the talent coming out of the draft. I, I remember Kobe Bryant vividly like, yeah, if I were to go to college, I would have loved gone to play. Gone to yeah. Shusha- play Coach K. Shashevsky knows. I don't know why he pronounces it like that. But, right. But he knows what he's doing. He really does. Uh, he, he When he finally embraced the one and done, man, that's when they started – you know, coming up again, landing guys like RJ Barrett, um, landing guys like uh, Zion Williamson. So, yeah, and and the the one cat that I've been following, I was always big on Lonzo. Mm-hmm. I think that that is what he is. He's going to be like a Derek Fisher stat with better <laughs> defense and maybe a couple more blocks. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be more on the defensive end. He's going to um, maybe like a Joe Dumars. He can be a Joe Dumars. Sure. So. And that's a huge compliment because I hated what Joe Dumars did to the Lakers. <laughs> so totally, yeah, he could be that. Uh, I I hope he becomes that. You know, I I, I kind of like how he plays. I really do. I, I think it's also just circumstantial that if he was more like we were talking about this in pre-production, his younger brother Lamelo. Yeah, you know, like Lamelo sees a math and he executes the math. Yes. Or with Lonzo, like, like, you know, going back to the Caruso thing, it's like, let me be team. And then you're forcing the team so much where it's like, dude, you could have just shot that. Yes. And and honestly, I was one of those guys who thought LaMelo was so, or the youngest one, LaMelo, so overrated because, okay, so. Like Julian Newman overrated? Well, okay, well, here, let me give you the little background story. Sure. Here. I went to Bishop Montgomery. Bishop Montgomery won the state title, and they were the ones who basically made uh, the Ball Brothers mad, and Lonzo pulled them out of school. Bishop Montgomery won the state championship that year. Um, They beat Chino Hills. So I did watch a lot of the Ball Brothers playing. LaMelo would never play defense. He would just walk up the court, wait at the three-point line, and make every single three that he shot. And I'm like, how overrated is, is this guy? He's not going to be anything. But something you alluded to later, and it makes perfect sense, he's the youngest brother. So guess who he's learning from? The, the older brothers. The older brothers. Okay. He's learning that. Definitely don't be like Jello. Jello is a fucking dumbass. Okay, Lonzo, Lonzo. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to shoplift. <laughs> totally. Yeah. and uh, In China. In China. You know, and, you know, I'm going to keep my shot. And I'm going to keep working on it despite what people say, you know. So um, I was one of those who thought LaMelo would just not be in the league. But he's looking like a top 10 draft pick to me now. He's looking really good. And I think this whole Australia thing really helped him out. It really did. There, there's something about playing with grown men. Yes, Definitely. Like, I see it, definitely, It it's better off if LaMelo was my son. I'd rather him play with pros internationally yes. than the G League. Yes. Because the G League feels like an advanced JV team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the, you're above frosh. <laughs> uh, is that term still being used today? I, I don't know. It's a, so for the younger audience, frosh is short for freshman, sophomore, Basketball players. So there was, you know, there's varsity, junior varsity is the middle, and then frosh. Okay? So it feels like the G League is really frosh. Yes. Where if you played for Team Armenia, they're going to fucking throw a pager at you and fucking. Oh, my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Like if you play for for Greece, 
they take that shit personal. Yes, they like, do. They, like those games, it's like a soccer game. Oh, man. Soccer fans. <sighs> wow. Right. So you're saying top 10. You're thinking of LaMelo. I think he potentially can be top 10. I think he really can be. The guy, I mean, first of all, he's tall, but he didn't lose his coordination. He still has his handles. Man, his shot, it's wet. Straight up. It is. Which is why AD so dope because he used to be a point guard, right? Yes. Yes. That's right. You know? And and the one thing is LaMelo is now this, this the Steph Curry generation. Yes. Where, ironically, just with a couple of years difference, uh, Lonzo is the LeBron generation, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He likes to pass the ball. Mm-hmm. He... He's cool with scoring, but really it's like the assist. Yeah. B- being systematic. Mm-hmm. Where LaMelo is like the Steph Curry. Oh, maybe. Break the wheel. But you know what? Oh, I'm four feet after the logo of the jump ball logo. Oh, oh I'm going to shoot. Yeah, look at that first shot Steph Curry took against the Lakers. 40-footer. Right. Dummy. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to Chase Center. Totally. <laughs> But, but, yeah, so as far as for Lonzo, there's an article that you and I shared. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could read read this quote from The Athletic okay. from Lonzo. Okay. So he basically said, you know, um, that wasn't – I mean, that wasn't too much pressure. Number two pick, you're supposed to do a job. You're supposed to turn the franchise around. And I don't think I did it to the best of my abilities. So, in context also, uh, Lonzo was talking about being traded, mm-hmm. you know, and to follow up what um, jo- Joel read, it was like, it was just time for a change. I got hurt both years and didn't want to do what I wanted to do. I was blessed to stay home and play in front of everybody, but it wasn't working over there. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and with that statement, it's, that, that is a coupling of a lot of things. One, it's being free from dad. Yes. Two, it's like all I know is L.A. Mm-hmm. And moving to New Orleans might help him be on his own. Yes. Both physically and fiscally. Yes. Maybe on his own. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, it's like um, Markel Fultz. Like I, I bet you Orlando is like a heaven sent feeling mm-hmm. for him. Like all they know about me in Philadelphia is my shoulder. Mm-hmm. My stupid free throw form. <laughs> <laughs> Me not making baskets that are like four or five feet away. Yes, yes. You know, so I'm I'm sure he welcomes this whole thing. And then now he's like with the Mamba Academy. He looks okay. Yes, yes. He was playing good during preseason. Mm-hmm. But with ball, um, I think he touched on it perfectly. Uh, good. Bring it back. Yes. He's, uh, he's becoming a man. And not only is he becoming a man, he is now forced to become a man because he's not around his family. He's not around all his friends who I'm sure are all yes men, right? Oh, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. You know, now he's in a situation where, like, before he was the big brother, the leader of the group. Now he's in a position where he's forced to learn not only on the court, but in life and from other people around him in general, you know, and from a new environment. You know, it's kind of like the whole concept behind the show Survivor, you get thrown into an environment where you're not comfortable. Sure. So you have to adapt. You have to learn. This is what Lonzo Ball is becoming, and it's going to make him pretty dangerous, in my opinion. Plus, with the weapons he has around him now, and, and you know, I hate the guy, but he has a guy like J.J. Redick to learn from. Drew Holiday is Drew, dope, apparently. Drew Holiday? Wow, you know. And plus, what – and then I know he's going to a new place and everything, but – I have to say what he learned from LeBron is going to help him greatly over there because they're still really good friends and LeBron's still going to be there for him as much as he can be. So right now, you know, say for his dad, that's a whole other conversation. His dad, Lonzo Ball has a great future ahead of him as long as he stays healthy. Yeah. And, and I completely agree with everything. What you said, I think he's, he's a godsend for Zion. Yes. Oh, man, yes. You couldn't set him up with a better point guard. And not that he worked on his three-point form. Oh, man. I mean, you, Lonzo Ball, all he has to do is throw that ball anywhere within six feet of the basket. Zion's going to jump up and catch it. The only thing I worry about Lonzo Ball is 
he has he's such a two thousands almost late nineties style point guard. Mm-hmm. Which might be good for that team if you think about it's it. It's great for that team. What he needs to do right now, if he's like, hey, I'm a team player, I'm a team player, just make sure you improve your three-point shot. Yes, yes. Definitely. Like, he, he's totally a Derek Fisher stat, but he has a lot of Robert Ori-isms where you won't see the ball poke. <laughs> you know, the ball punch assist. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. The mitigating, I didn't block, but it made the shot really difficult because <laughs> yeah. I'm six six and yeah. I can, you know, D up a lot of the small forwards yes. even. You want to know one thing that really bugged me about his game in L.A., and I don't know if he fixed it because it's going to take a while to mm, see it, mm. was his getting blocked from behind breakaway layup. Happened way too often when he was a Laker. He'd break away with a layup, and he'd get blocked from behind. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> you know, are your, are your teammates not talking to you, or are you just not listening to them? You know, um, He needs to dunk that. He can't. That's the aggression that his youngest brother has. Yes. I'm going to get this. Yes. And I'm going to take it. Yeah. And and like, like, you know, like if you're 6'6", six, six, dunk it. Like what you're saying. Exactly. Get it. Yeah. Finger rolls are cute. And they score once in a while. But they'll get their ass blocked from behind from these NBA stars. I mean, he should have learned that from LeBron. He? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he had one of the greatest come from behind blocks ever, you know. I, I also feel... Moving to New Orleans, moving like he chose. Uh, getting traded with Brandon Ingram. And Hart. And Hart does help him. Yes. But, you know, Brandon Ingram, he scored like 18 points, had six rebounds and like five assists. The other day, I feel like Brandon Ingram's uh, – what what would that be classified if it's your pinnacle, your top? I just used the right word anyways. His ceiling? His ceiling mm-hmm. is DeMar DeRozan. Hmm, that's interesting. Doesn't point. shoot threes too well. Uh-huh. Is adequate. Maybe you're at thirty three percent at best. Okay. Drives to the basket well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Now. I, I see more like a Demar Derozan ceiling. Yeah. So and it's perfect that Lonzo Ball's there because Demar Derozan needs someone to pass it to him. Correct. So needs a facilitator because Demar Derozan cannot facilitate at all. I, I think he's good. Like when there's momentum. Yes. When he has the ball, like, let's see, a little bit past half court and he has momentum, fine. Handle it and get there. So you mean kind of a James Worthy almost? Kind of. Not to that level, obviously, because James Worthy is the pinnacle of what a support player should be. But something like One that. One of the illest. Yeah, the illest, I think, in terms of support. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like he could be James Worthy. It's just, I feel like. Brandon Ingram also thinks while he's dribbling. Should I drive to the basket? On ISO plays. As opposed to James Worthy, who had to think about dribbling. <laughs> right. Well, James Worthy had the luxury of Magic yeah. Johnson and just going for it. Yeah, right, and dunking. James Worthy had no handles whatsoever. None. None. He was like a fast break player. Yeah. Where with uh, Brandon Ingram, I think if there's one of the three I would love to welcome back, it would probably be Lonzo first, mm-hmm. Brandon Ingram second. Yes. And and I'm talking about the full youth league. I would say probably Julius Randle. Oh wow. Those are the three I would welcome back. Curious, what's he gonna do at, you know when up in New York? I'm wondering. I think those guys are gung ho right now. Uh-huh. Like do you see what one of the Morris twins did? He hit like one of the players with a basketball on the oh, forehead. What? <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, dude. And I was just like, dude, that that's I don't know what kind of foul you would give that, but that's yeah, I mean you're you're literally N one in someone's forehead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, I I, I think they're gung ho right now because they're the underdogs. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're Philly's the gonna hurt them. Oh, wow. Philly. F- yeah. Philly's gonna hurt them. I, I think they're a good scrappy team, but I don't I, I don't know if I would consider them even a, an eighth seed. <laughs> that's true that's true I, oh, the Knicks I, I don't think they make the playoffs yeah I really don't but 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 now after the first preseason game I see where our benefit is with size mm, yes yes you know um, that front line when um, that starting the starting lineup that you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show in the first game um, I I don't know how to say but I kind of just didn't see any holes in that front line. 
Nope. I really didn't. There's no holes offensively or defensively. I mean, it was basically you throw the ball up any like anywhere around the basket. It was, sure. It was going in. Or you could it could be a shot. The rebound's coming down in, in someone's hands on the Lakers, an offensive rebound, and it's going to go back in. You know? And it was a dedicated Avery Bradley hound. Danny Green, hound and shoot threes. Mm-hmm. LeBron, he can handle any three and play mm-hmm. defense against any yeah. three in the league. Anthony Davis, too tall. <laughs> JaVale McGee, too much energy. Yes. So all five of them, you knew what you were going to get, mm-hmm. which is why I love that lineup. Okay, so let's bring it back around to uh, what we were talking about, Lonzo Ball. How do you think that team's going to do? Where do you see them? Do you see them in the playoffs? I don't see it yet, man. Because right yeah. now, there's Lakers Clippers, two Lakers teams. Mm-hmm. There's Utah. There's Utah. There's the Rockets. Denver. Denver. Um, depending what... Golden State is what, another one. What Golden State's going to do, Golden State, I see in the 6, 7, 8 spot. Yes. At minimum. Yes. Because once Clay's back, maybe they do, they rally, they go up all the way to fifth yeah. spot, maybe. We don't, we don't know what Clay, we don't know what Clay, Clay coming back is going to be like. Sure. So that's already six teams right there. Yeah. Seven or eight, uh, Minnesota's not going to do anything. Dallas, no. I don't think Dallas is going to do anything. Dallas has the potential. Portland can sneak To in slide. Mm-hmm. Portland is a definite eighth. Yeah. Definite eighth at minimum. Yes. So. What about Minnesota? I, I think they're just too happy and content. <laughs> Dangerous in the NBA, by the way. They lost uh, Darius Sarek. Yes. Which, which I liked for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. With, um, who's the three from Philly? Is it Covington? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'd like that trade for them. Yeah. And who's our, who's our leader? Who, who is their number one? It's a split between Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns is sorry. It's he's kind of a soy baby to me. He's kind of soft. Yeah, dude. Yeah. He looks like that tall guy that works in a bodega. Oh my York, gosh. Right? <laughs> Where it's like, uh, okay, I'll get you your grape soda. Yeah, in a white linen shirt or something. Yeah. Right. Oh, one chopped cheese <laughs> for these two. You know. So for me, I don't get. I I I understand why Jimmy Butler left because he probably wanted money first. Yeah. Which wasn't getting offered to him. And mm-hmm. two, someone that would appreciate his fire. Yeah. And at the same time, I think he couldn't deal with the softness of Carl Anthony Towns. He just couldn't. Or Wiggins. Or Wiggins. Oh, yeah. Uh, both sure. of them. He, was, of them. He, was, he had problems with both of them. Yes. Yes, he did. And he kind of like passive aggressively gave him props and took away props in the sense mm-hmm. of where he was like, dude, if I had Andrew Wiggins' capa- capability and physicality, mm-hmm. I'd be one of the best players ever. Okay. So, okay. Once again, let's bring it back to New Orleans. Uh, where do you see them in three years? Like the Lakers Ah. before we got LeBron. There you go. Tempting to make it to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Then they go on some kind of weird 15-game losing streak. Here's the thing, man. I always try to explain this to Laker fans. (laughs) How do you, Joel, if you don't mind I'm uh, I'm on the second side of uh, between 40 and 50. <laughs> okay, so I'm 44. Okay. The first tough rodeo for me was finding out Nick Van Exel's gone. Uh, Eddie Jones is gone. Mm-hmm. Sidel Threat era passed. Oh, the triplets. We had... Um, Peeler. D- Anthony Peeler, Doug Christie, George Lynch. I was liking all the drafts that Jerry West did. Yeah. But I was like, wait, we have Vlade and we're swapping Vlade for Kobe Bryant? You know <laughs> I, what I mean? I had that same reaction. Right. Because for I, his I, high school kid? Really? Right. Exactly. But, you know, we didn't know they were trying to go for Shaq. Yeah. But the attachment to Julius Randle, um, let's even go pre Brandon Ingram, right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about uh, Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson. Oh, wow. Yeah. Those guys, right? Yeah. Brandon Ingram's uh, contract and Kyle Kuzma's contract is up already next season. Yeah, that's right. So if you're going to be extending all these people, Julius Randle was technically up two seasons ago. So you're, if you have to fill your, your salary spot with these potential guys that are non-superstars, you're not going to have anything to sign a, a whale. <laughs> yeah. 
I always want it, it's the Laker way, and it's yeah. you know there's a rarity where. Uh, sorry for the long winded answer. No, no, no. O four Pistons. That's a rarity. Very well. Even the the other Pistons later. And all due to Laker injuries. Yes. One was with Byron Scott and James Worthy. Mm-hmm. And one was with Shaq, though Shaq was the lazy one. But, <laughs> but we can't count out Carmelo. Malone. Yep. Uh, Rick Fox was ailing. Yes. Derek Fisher was ailing. Yes. And Horace Grant had had a hip injury. Yep. So, I mean, I mean those, those Pistons, at least two of those were because of the Laker injuries. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Lightning in a bottle. Uh, 2011 Dallas Mavericks. Yes. Okay. So if we have Julius Randle, we signed him. We extended already Jordan Clarkson to $14 million. Now we got to <laughs> extend uh, – let's say we don't get Kuzma and Hart, but let's say we still have D'Angelo Russell. Mm-hmm. So D'Angelo Russell already had an extension. Brandon Ingram and Kuzma, Brandon Ingram's extension. Who, who, which is the wheel that mm-hmm. we get? I, I have no idea. But I didn't but, – but what I'm saying is for you who's listening and watching – that's the rodeo that you go through. When when we got Robert Ori for Cedric Sabalos, and granted, I was not as researched then because it's like I didn't know what the mid level except I was barely learning that. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait, I like Robert Ori, but why not have Robert Ori and Cedric? Have Cedric ah, at the okay. three, Robert yeah. Ori at the four. The Phoenix Suns don't want him. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, like the signing with Kwame Brown. Why are we? trading for him when we can just sign him for the mid-level. I think we signed him for like $9 million. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, in hindsight, then it led to Pau Gasol yes, matching the yeah, money, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So for me, the one thing is you can't be attached if they're not stars. Exactly. I'm guilty of it, of being attached to potential. <laughs> and that's how drafts are built. That's how, you know, I mean, in every sport, everybody is drafted off of potential, you know. Because nobody has shown improved yet, and um, like okay, so let's let's bring it to the NBA in general. How many people out there have max contracts that don't deserve them? You want to ask the Knicks, especially when Isaiah Thomas <laughs> yeah. is the general manager, right? Quentin Quentin right? Richardson. Oh my god! That era. How about the Allen Houston sign, um, uh, Glenn Rice era? Oh yep, yep. When they already had um, who's the guy that goes? Oh, how am I going to eat? Uh, Injured his hand, uh, Zadell, Latrell Sprewell. Latrell Sprewell, yes. Why do you sign uh, Glenn Rice when you have Alan Houston and Latrell Sprewell? I... Total redundant. Total redundant. What you need is defense also at that point. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's attachment. It is. It is. And it's, it, it's, I notice it with the fans, too, because, you know, there's a lot of people who are, who are pissed. They, remember, remember the fallout when Jordan Clarkson was gone? You know, especially, especially the Filipinos, especially the Filipinos. Jesus oh, man, Christ. he's, uh, you know, OK, Jordan Clarkson. I like the guy. I really do. But honestly, I was I would I was more mad that D'Angelo Russell, even though with the personality things, I really wanted him to stay with the team. Really? I, I liked him at the time. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, I, I can care less about nationality. This is the Lakers, you know, same here. You know, you're not brown. You're not white. You're not black. You're purple and gold. Or as uh, as Doctor Bus used to say, you're foreign blue and gold. You know your your color has nothing to do with my attachment. Because now, you know, honestly, my attachment is to the jersey. You know, and that's how I deal with it. So, um, I was I was pissed when Shaq left, but I was pissed for about ten minutes. You mean when he was traded or traded? Yeah, I was pissed when uh, when Kobe was threatening to leave, but I was like, well. If he's on the Bulls, if he's on the Clippers, oh, well. Fuck him. Fuck him. See you later. That's where you and I agree a lot because I remember I had a lot of friends who were like, dude, Yao Ming, that's, you have the same last name. You should buy his jersey. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> I'm, I'm a Shaq dude. Yeah. Why the fuck am I going to be a Yao, buy a Yao Ming jersey? I'm sure he's, he's an okay person, but mm-hmm. it's like, dude, I'm a Laker fan. Yeah. My last name's Yao, but it doesn't mean I'm going to buy his jersey. So many people are like, are you mad that Shaq's on the Celtics? No. Because I was more disappointed. I was. I was a little bit. Use. No, I was I wasn't I was a little disappointed, you know, for about ten minutes. But then yeah, he won championships for the Lakers. I loved him when he was a Laker. I don't like him right now. Uh, <laughs> not, not, since we're kind of making this evergreen, 
the first three rings with PJ, with Phil Jackson. Yes. I want you to react to my statement. The first two rings, Shaq was the Jordan to Pippen. Mm-hmm. The third ring, that's where everything started evening out. Yes, I agree. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. But Staples Center is a house that Shaq built. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. And I didn't mind that, like the statement you're. I saw that happening as it was happening. I didn't mind Kobe and Shaq being on the same level at all because that third year, if you remember, they were number one and number two in the league, hands down, no debate. Beautiful thing for the Lakers. Doesn't matter if they fought. Doesn't matter if uh, chemistry wasn't there. You know, you know me. I always said chemistry is overrated. Bring me talent. Yes, bring me talent because it's going to work on the court. Because the bottom line is that these guys' egos are so huge, they don't want to look bad in front of people. So they're going to make it work on the court. They can get in fights in locker room for all I care because it happened with the Bulls through six championships. It's happening with the Patriots. They fight each other in the locker room all the time. People don't see it. So chemistry to me is just overrated. But when you're on the field. And, and let me add context because I'm sure there's a, a few dum-dums out there. <laughs> what you mean is also like, hey, talent with the system versus chemistry over a system is a big difference. Because all, all the talent needs to do is we're going to go through DEF. And if they execute DEF begrudgingly, mm-hmm. if they execute DEF, it's going to get it done. It's going to get it done. Exactly. Like with 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 – uh, AD and LeBron, you can just run pick and roll with either of them yep. all day, all, all day. day, all day. Especially if it's off the break. Mm-hmm. If you don't stop LeBron, he's just gonna lay it up or dunk it. <laughs> and if you cover and and go with the momentum of LeBron on the other side is AD. Yep, it's, it's the whole thing. You don't have to like your job; just produce. You know and, how many and people, superstars produce, dude. You know how many people at Amazon hate their jobs. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Okay. I can only bet. I can only, yeah, exactly. But you know what? They're producing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was, um, well, well, in regards to Lonzo, so let's close out. Yes. I thought it was quite mature of him to admit that. I, yeah. And this is, and this is, we'll bring this full circle. This is him becoming a man. This is great for him. You know. There's still a lot of bumps in, in oh, the. Of course. Belt buckle holes to fill. <laughs> yes, of course. In the There's, belt of life. Yes. I mean, he has a few more dress shoes to buy and a few more suits to buy. But, you know, he's growing up. Yeah. Uh, so props to Lonzo. I, I, it's just bad circumstance because I really wanted to see if D'Angelo can develop into like a bit of a Ray Allen mm-hmm. and play with Lonzo. Oh, wow. That would – wow. That would have been nice. It's It's just dumbass fucking – who was it? Snapchat sharer oh, D'Angelo yeah. barely plays any defense. But having those two guys that are like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six in the backcourt mm-hmm. with B.I. and Randall. And then you can have like uh, – mm-hmm. what's in the, the, the name of the Ukrainian guy uh, who's with the Clippers now? Um, oh, yeah. I forgot. He's a Clipper now. <laughs> God, what is his name? I used to even argue about how the game has passed him up. Oh. Um, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I – uh, we signed Muscala for him. I can't believe I can't. <laughs> All right, this is bugging the shit out of me. Uh, there it is, the the Google Internet machine. So <laughs> Clippers roster. It's not Piatkowski, is it? <laughs> no, it's it's um. I I always want to say Sasha Vujicic. <laughs> Ivica Zubats. Jesus oh, Christ. Zubats, yeah. Okay, that guy. <laughs> and, and depending on on the trades that worked out, we could have had Moag at the four, Jonathan Williams at the five. You know what's crazy about that lineup? The more I think about it, the more I'm thinking they would have attracted an alpha like you're talking about. They would have attracted a free agent, yeah. a free agent who is ridiculous. But the problem is... It come extension time. Yes. When you need to extend them and there's no more money. Well, that's that's the name of the game, right? You you get an over-talented player at a cheap price. And then when they want money, 
you perhaps just let him go. Which they probably would have been traded anyways, like the same way with Shaq, right? Yes. And, you know, we had to clear so much cap space. Show me my money, guy. And then we tried J.R. Reed and Eldon Campbell with him. Oh, didn't wow. work. Didn't work. <laughs> though, though, you know what would have worked well with Shaq is uh, Sam Perkins. The OG <laughs> stretch four. Yeah, definitely. The OG. He was a little slow-footed, but whatever. You know, Plenty slow-footed. <laughs> Very slow-footed, by the way. But, yeah, so uh, I think in regards to Lonzo, that's really mature of him. I, I think it's a great situation for him, and I, I hope he thrives. I, I really do. I'm, I'm cheering for that guy to do well. So, uh, Except against the Lakers, of course. Of course. Which you can do fine against as long as, as, long as we get the W. Uh, I'll give you that. There you go. Lonzo. Get your triple-double, lose by 10. Love it. Right. So my reasoning for wanting to drop someone from the roster – and getting another big is because we got to sign two. The other guy that I, I, I do want to sign, hopefully by like midseason, is Andre Iguodala. Wow. So Andre Iguodala uh, somehow leaked information to Woj because Woj is the basketball god. <laughs> and when Woj says it, most likely it's correct. Yes. He says, Andre, uh, Andre, what the fuck? Andre. Andre Iguodala choose, will choose between the Lakers and the Clippers if bought out by the Grizzlies. Now, let's put ourselves in the situation of Andre. Because mm-hmm. if, we're, if, we're, if we're being Laker fans, and we'd say, yeah, of course you should join the Lakers. Of course. Uh, for me, there's a certain prestige that comes along with letting the Lakers sign you. <laughs> and you become like... Oh, I know who you are, but now you're now you're the Robert Ory, Rick Fox hero. So for me, if I were Andre Iguodala, I would sign with the Lakers because you fought against LeBron, and to win with him, I think would add a little bit of glory, and also the way he's going to be just as responsible as Rick Fox, Derek Fisher, Robert Ory, Brian Shaw. Mm. You think he starts? No. Okay. The reason why is because he was already playing injured during the playoffs yes. last um, year. I don't think he starts either. And he was also already heavily injured when um, the Cleveland uh, won a 3-1, that 3-1 season. Yes. Um, I don't see him starting on either team, honestly. Not so even. if you were Andre, who would you? <laughs> okay. So if I'm uh, – I want another ring, Andre. I'm jumping on the Lakers. You know why? Okay. There's, you got two of the top five players in the NBA. That's if if there's anything that's true in the NBA, superstars won championships. Okay. Sorry to say, Kawhi Leonard is a superstar. PG is not. I'm sorry. PG just he get he's one of. Those, remember we were talking. He's about, a super third option. I remember, <laughs> remember we were talking about max contracts. He basically got a max contract off of one series against LeBron that they lost. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and and honestly, it's like if I'm Iguodala, that that's where I'm going to go if I want a championship. Okay. And if I don't want a championship, if I just want to play and I want the challenge, I'm not going to the Clippers. I'm not going to Lakers. I'm going to call Utah up so I can guard both of those dudes in LA. That's my take. That's what I would do. If I was Iguodala. But that makes Utah a scary team. Yes. That is why. Can you imagine if he brought a championship to Utah? Yeah, I, I don't want to imagine. No, I don't. But I don't want to imagine that. That would be the most dangerous signing for Andre Iguodala, in my opinion. I that would Mike, love him on the Lakers. That Mike Conley signing would look so genius. Oh my gosh. To pair him up with Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. And when they play the Lakers, they play the Clippers. Guess what? Guess who's sticking LeBron? Guess who's sticking Kawhi? Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Iggy. It, but he, here's the other thing. Uh, so this is my pseudo-objective agreement with some Clipper fans. With the Clippers, you know what you're going to get. Whether it's Shamit, whether if it's PG, whether if it's Kawhi, Pat Bev. You, you know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Which is on their side, mm-hmm. the plus on their side. With the Lakers, 
You have to factor so many different things. But the thing is, if it factors out 50%, meaning Avery Bradley plays great D. Yes. Danny Green plays decent D, but just makes his shot. That starting lineup is already good. Mm -hmm. If if Quinn Cook can bring that championship moxie Mm -hmm. and then have him alter with Rajon Rondo, great. If Dwight Howard gets stronger... Kuzma plays better, and then um, Kuzma is a backup four, so you have a score. Mm-hmm. Great. Yes. And if you want me to put it in a lot simpler terms. Okay. Okay. So say, for instance, you know, one of our fans is sitting out there, and he has his wife next to him or his kid. Okay? That's simpler, huh? This is huh? very simple. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's pretty smart, by the way. But anyways. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not knocking your wife. <laughs> I mean. um, this is how I – this is my analogy with the Lakers and Clippers. With the Clippers – Someone can sell. Someone's selling you a gold mine. There's gold, right? But if someone's selling you the Lakers, they're selling you a mine. Could be diamonds. Could be coal. You just don't know. Or it could be like that fucking Lifetime TNT show where it's like Storage Wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get a lot of whack shit. You too. get a lot of whack shit, but there might be that little thing hiding in the corner. You know, you open up the Clipper locker. It's like. Oh, playoffs here, playoffs here, playoffs here. A bunch of boxes say playoffs. You open up the Lakers, it, it says maybe playoffs, maybe draft pick. We don't know. <laughs> you know what might be another alternative route for Iggy to stay healthy and play with a, a decent team? If he went to Philly. <sighs> wow, yeah. If he went to Philly, whew. I kind of, I do have a feeling, though. I mean, Philly would be beautiful for him. I do have a feeling he kind of wants to stay out here somewhere. I think he's 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 Cali based now after yeah. playing for uh, yeah. Golden State for yeah. a couple of years, especially after being in Philly, you know where he started, right? So, um, a lot of players, they you know, I don't care what anybody says. Everybody says like there's no West Coast bias in terms of free agents and everything. I mean, look at the West now. You're telling me there's no bias? I think it really does have a lot to do with the weather. You know, you go outside in New York during an All Star game. Oh, that's why there's no All-Star games there. <laughs> totally. Here, here, here's what my second – I know it come playoff time, it comes down to seven or eight-man rotation. Imagine if your next five is Quinn Cook, who's hot, Iggy at the two, Jared Dudley can shoot the three, uh, 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 a vastly improved Kyle Kuzma at the four, and Dwight at the five. That's your next five that can you can oh, intertwine man. with. You know what the most beautiful part about that is? Mm. I didn't hear KCP's name. Yeah, dude. dude <laughs> if, okay, I brought this up on their last video pod. Yes. If Golden State – so this is not what I'm proposing. But if Golden State said, okay, we'll give you D'Angelo Russell, you, go, you give us Danny Green and KCP. We said no. Okay. Does that change your mind now? After seeing shit fuck, fucking yes. fuck around in two preseason games? Yes. <laughs> he's like Luke Walton's uh, contract when he was still with the Lakers oh yeah yeah you're but right that's how I feel about KCP I was I guess at the time it was that whole you were talking about um, attachment to the players sure that was me giving him the benefit of the doubt and me as a Laker fan I do that sometimes I do it all the time <laughs> okay I do it all the time you got five more minutes to share with me sure okay so and, and my closing lineup my death lineup would be on 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 defense. Oh no, let me just give, give you the hype five. So it's Danny Green, uh, Andre Iguodala, LeBron James, um, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis. Wow. I, I would stick LeBron at the three for defense because uh-huh. he can defend a lot of threes, anyways. Okay. Uh, Danny Green, unfortunately, is going to have to try and weave the point guard towards the middle. Okay. Kyle Kuzma plays the defense on the four. Anthony Davis at the five. Yeah. And now Andre plays the closing two. Yeah, you bring up Kyle Kuzma. I, I actually can't wait to see what he can do defensively. Right. Because I'm still not impressed. Sorry to say. I'm Bro, not- I, I'm at a point where, hey, if you could flip Rajon Rondo – in KCP for Andre Iguodala, do you do it? Yes. Same here. Definitely. Heartbeat. 
Easy. Would you flip Kuzma and KCP for someone? Uh, something logical. Let's not say Kawhi Leonard or PG, <laughs> but hmm. who, who would you consider to flip for that? Julius Randle? I would love that. Yes. <laughs> I was a big Julius Randle fan when he was with the Lakers. Have him at the four? What? <sighs> And then he'll play the defense on the fives for yes, Anthony Davis. He will. Baby ass fucking Anthony Davis. <laughs> yeah, and he's played with Anthony Davis. So, man, if they can go after him, that would be real nice. Yeah, I would real love nice. to flip Julius Randle yes. for Kuz and Casey Beal. That's not going to happen. Yeah, no, it's not. If you're Washington, do uh-huh. you flip Beal for KCP and Kuz? That's a tough one. Okay, so because in in Washington's perspective, in Washington, not in the Lakers' perspective, not fair, right? No, no, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Bradley Beal's too good. He's too good. He he's he's way too reliable from three point in a three point league. I would flip if it's possible. Troy Daniels, KCP, and Kuz. I, I I think Troy Daniels. Ironically, that's what the dude who was attacking at me at on that forum. Oh wow! I like Troy Daniels. Yeah, I thought he played decent, but you know, here's your three point shooter. Here's KCP. He only has a year and a half left on his contract. It, it, yeah, I mean, but also I have another one. Would you flip uh, Kuzma and KCP for Brandon Ingram? No. Okay, I wouldn't either. Uh, someone at my gym brought it up, and I said, uh, no, only because of the health concerns for Brandon Ingram for me. If Brandon showed potential of playing a four, because he has the height of a four. Yes, he does. But Kuzma, I feel, even though he's only an inch taller, mm-hmm. his physical motion has potential to be like a Clifford Robertson, mm-hmm. and, uh, Robert Ory. And I feel like he's his game is more compatible with LeBron, which is... The ticket right now. He's the reason why he stayed. Cost control contract. Yes. And can play and roam around without the ball. Yes. So, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all our topics for today. Wow. We knocked it out. That felt really quick. Yes, it did. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. And then with with, uh, Dean's taking like a more of a producer role, which he should be able to chime in once in a while. Yes, he should. I think this will be good. Is this ever evergreen enough to play like mid-November? Yeah, yeah. Still, right? I think so. Okay, so we'll we'll have it on the Facebook Lakers Nation Philippines. Mm-hmm. That'll be up. It'll be on Plug One Two, uh, the YouTube page, and mm-hmm. then we'll be airing this mid-November for the Lakers mixtape. Azul, can you uh, can you go ahead and repeat our social media? Uh, yeah, updates? yeah, sure. Uh, it's Plug One Two is a social media hub for four shows. Right, I do my solo show where I uh, comment on news and sports. Mm-hmm. This show, which is the Lakers mixtape with DJ Jarrell and DJ Deans, Beer Jitsu, which is all everything is tied in with music, but that's more mostly based out of boxing, MMA, and Jiu Jitsu. Nice. Which, if ever you guys want to guess. Definitely C- come in, especially since I am now in a. I am now mem- me and Dino, me and Deans, DJ right. Deans. We are now members at a boxing gym, right? So there's that, and then there's the one show that Rhett specifically wants me to keep is Charlie on the Beat Junkies, mm-hmm. which is about adjusting to society in your 40s. It's for like the 40 plus year old b boys. I'd I'd love to sit in and even just listen on that one. Yeah, you, know, you should. I'll be a fly on the wall. That would be great. No, no, no. That the reason why you're on the network is because you know I, I know you have lots to say with solid background. So <laughs> thank you. I, well, I appreciate that. So yeah, it's P L U G O N E T W O plug one two. You can go to plug12.com. Everything's listed there. We're on SoundCloud, Perfect. iTunes, YouTube, Facebook. Everything's all up in there. And signing off with DJ Jarrell, a.k.a. Joel, the Lakers mixtape. Peace.